snow is just hours away in the east and the models are finally converging around the idea of the northwest trend of the precipitation that I've been talking about and that has implications for snowfall totals in the southeast, mid-Atlantic, and northeast. I'm going to break it all down for you here in a second, show you the very latest data including trends and snowfall maps. Got a lot of those coming up as well and if that's not enough, the pattern shaping up as we head toward the uh, end of January is low with potential for places like the Mid-Atlantic, Northeast, Ohio Valley, Mid-South, and Southeast. And I'm not talking about nickel and dime events. I'm talking about a blockbuster winter storm or two. We're going to take a look at exactly what I'm seeing there and show you why that's the case. But before we do, I just want to say thank you to all of you who have wished my son Cold Drizzle a happy birthday. He turned 21 a couple of days ago. Really appreciate all of the kindness and support. Yesterday was a big day for the channel. We hit 10,000 subscribers. Started this uh, channel in February of last year. It has grown rapidly. Could not do that without you and all of the support that you've given me. Thank you for that and the encouragement. And lastly, Greg and Teresa sent me a super thanks, which I didn't even know about. It's just a contribution, a donation, and I, I just, I'm blown away. I'm just humbled, and I just thank you from the bottom of my heart for the kindness and the generosity there. I really appreciate that. Um, so with that said, if you're new to the channel, we do these videos every day. Subscribe if you haven't done so. Hit the like button. Leave a comment. Let me know where you're commenting from, what kind of weather you're seeing, thoughts on the pattern, but most importantly, if there's anything I can be in prayer about, please put it in the comment section. I read and respond to all of those. Didn't get to them until yesterday. However, uh, late last night, because it was a busy day, but I will read them and respond, and thank you for all the support again. Now, we're going to get right into the storm this weekend. Got timestamps for all of this stuff, so you can just click where you need to go, but here is the NAM showing us snowfall tomorrow morning at 7 a.m., and we've got snow in Pensacola up through Columbus toward Macon, just south of Atlanta, and up toward getting in toward Greenville, Spartanburg, Asheville, Boone, and on up into the mountains of West Virginia, Charleston here seeing some snow, according to the NAM. Now, this is just one model run, but it gives you an idea. I'm going to start here to show you what's, what we're looking at. So we're looking at rain into the eastern coastal plain, uh, Piedmont sections of the Carolinas back into Georgia. Georgia, eastern Georgia. So we go through the day, that rain changes the snow as the system pulls east. Look at the NAM. It's got a low pressure developing off Cape Hatteras, and it sends precipitation all the way up through Virginia into the Delmarva. And you got rain on the eastern shore, and eventually that will turn to snow, according to the NAM. And the NAM just scrapes the northeast and it gives you a little bit of a, uh, you know, a little snow vent up here in the mid Atlantic and northeast. However, other models are not so far to the east when it gets up here and the precipitation shield has been bumping back to the west. So we'll put the NAM out to pasture once it gets past, say, the Delmarva region. But that is what we're looking at in terms of timing. Snowfall would be still be ongoing Monday morning when you wake up, potentially up here in the northeast, depending on which model you buy. But it will be winding down. The Europeans fast. The GFS is on the slow side. The NAM looks like it's on the fast side here. So that's kind of what the synoptic picture looks like. This, my friends, is the NAM 12K snowfall trend over the last five runs. Look at this. Can you see a pattern here? One, two, three, four. Four runs, my bad. And what we're seeing here is less snow to the east down here in the southeast and more snow back to the west. And I'm going to tell you why that is the case. We've, we're seeing less snow in the mid-Atlantic and up toward the northeast trending to more snow, and I'm going to tell you why that's the case as well. That's what's going on in terms of the NAM's snowfall output. Here is what the SREF is doing. Let's see if it's doing the same thing. Well, it's kind of bouncing around a little bit, but you can see up here in the, uh, boy, look at this area up here in the northeast, really seeing uh, an increase in snow out at range in terms of the SREF. Hey, there's my pen. Maybe I can draw some stuff today. And then down here, a little bit more in the way of snowfall footprint back to the west and a little bit less down here uh, in sort of the eastern Piedmont. So I'm going to look at that as well. And here is the rapid refresh. Look, we only get two runs of this, but look what it's doing up here in New England especially. Not a lot of change down here in the southeast, but look up here in New England and back into parts of the mid-Atlantic, seeing a trend to the northwest and increasing those snowfall totals, particularly along the coastal sections. And you get on back in here towards some of the I-95 corridor, you're looking at uh, some increase in snow, maybe as much as six inches from two to three inches before. And then the last one I'm going to show here in terms of the trend is just the European ensembles. And so you can see that the snowfall amounts have kind of 
bumped to the north and to the west over the last run as they're starting, the models are finally starting to see that northwest shift in the precipitation. And finally, a little bit of a bump up here and also up into the northeast too. Look at that, it's a pretty significant jump over the last couple of runs for the European ensembles. So here's what we can say. I think with confidence, we can show that this area up here in the northeast, of course, my pen isn't working and it just pops up, but it won't work today. Uh, we're seeing from Maine all the way back in toward uh, places like Philly, an increase as we move in toward overnight tonight and tomorrow in the snowfall amounts. And down here in the southeast, just a little bit of a northwesterly nudge. And I'm very, very skeptical. I'll just go ahead and tell you about these snowfall amounts from the Del Marva back in toward uh, south Georgia here around Macon and, and places like Columbus and stuff like that. This has got uh, snow all the way into Pensacola. I'm not sure about that. Probably could see that it, theoretically if we get snow to fall at a high enough rate. And uh, here is the European AI. Look at the precipitation. It is just bumped up big time, beef, beefed up here from the southeast all the way into the coastal and um, southeastern sections of the northeast, too, as we get closer to the event. The models are bringing this back a little bit closer to the coast. We're seeing a little bit better tilt in the main short wave that's creating the lift. And we're seeing much more warm advection and moisture transport in, as I sort of thought would happen as we move into the event. The thing that concerns me, though, are the temperatures here in the southeast. I'm not so concerned up here in the northeast from northern Virginia on up into uh, the Delaware and New Jersey and up in New York City, Boston and uh, Bangor and Augusta, Maine. I'm not so concerned about temperatures for you guys. You should see mostly snow out of this, but down here in the southeast, we're starting off with temperatures in the upper 30s and around 40, 42 in some of these locations. It's gonna take a Herculean effort to really cool that column Here's the European AI, AI Ensemble snowfall total. I didn't do a trend GIF on this, but look at this. Six inches plus up here from Boston up to Bangor and uh, down below that from Philly, you're looking at two or three inches over here toward New York City, maybe three, four inches and into Hartford, uh, looking at maybe four or five inches according to the European AI Ensembles. I think this is probably going to work out for you all a little bit less as you get on back down here because of the warm temperatures that we're having to deal with. Here is the temperature profile as we head on through uh, the evening hours tonight and into tomorrow morning. Look at this, 36 in the Piedmont, North Carolina, around Greensboro, up here toward Danville, we're looking at mid 30s and mid 30s through much of Virginia, 40s in South Carolina, and 30s back in uh, from basically you're, you're getting cold here in northern Alabama, northern uh, Georgia, but uh, down here in mid Georgia, central Georgia, cold air has not quite penetrated in. And if we go back to the NAMS simulated radar, let's go back here to the same time period. Look at that. We're starting to see precipitation break out. All right. And here's the temperature trend. Well, let's go to the uh, the morning hours down here. Look at this. So we're seeing finally some uh, temperatures, the cold temperatures surge in. The mountains up here in North Carolina and Virginia are blocking those cold temperatures from coming in. So they're going to be a little bit delayed here. That's why I think a lot of the precipitation that falls here in the Piedmont might actually be rain south and west of I-85. I think I-85 is kind of a good delineation down here in the Carolinas, uh, demarcation from rain to snow. Uh, and then we'll see how it comes down. Uh, but here's your, here's your temperatures. Let's go back... Um, over here to the precipitation as we look back at how it plays out. Let's go to this. There, 7 a.m. And we're starting to see the very western edge of this, say from Pensacola up to Macon into Greenville, Spartanburg to Asheville. There's where our snow transition zone is. But look what happens as we go through the afternoon into the morning hours into the afternoon. We're seeing chillier air into Georgia. I think you have the best shot of seeing some of that rain change to snow down here. Upstate South Carolina, maybe 85 again. But as we get on in through the afternoon, it takes a little while for those temperatures to cool. We looked at dry air yesterday. There's going to be some evaporational cooling as dry air works in. But the bigger thing is we're looking at rates. Heavier rates, we've got snow being produced in the upper levels or the mid levels of the atmosphere. It's going to fall and melt. And the more melting that happens, the more it cools the column. So you get the heavier precipitation rates, you get a lot more melting. You start to cool the column down, it becomes isothermal and snowflakes can survive down to the ground even if the ground temperatures are 35, 36 degrees. 
That's what we're going to see, rate dependent. So where the heaviest frontogenic forcing band or the deformed band sets up, that's where we're going to see the heaviest rates. That's where we're going to see the highest chance for snow. If that is a little bit east, there you have it. If it's a little bit farther to the west, that's probably where we're going to see the snow. And as we go through the afternoon, we get on to the afternoon hours. We're really not below freezing anywhere in the southeast till you get up to, into the Virginia area and into the mountains and foothills. But the cold air advection will be taking place. As this pulls away, it's going to get bitterly cold and then the temperatures are going to be cold everywhere in the east as we head on in toward Monday. And there you have sort of the picture. We'll go back to the NAM and just, you know, very light um, or small, narrow corridor of snow on the backside. And so we'll continue to watch this. It's going to be very, very difficult to pick up exactly where that corridor of snow uh, just sort of establishes itself, but it's trending back to the northwest, and it's going to be come down to a now cast. But uh, certainly, we've got some winter weather advisories up in parts of Georgia. We'll continue to watch that for the Carolinas. Don't have any alerts there yet, as far as I know. As we go out here and take a look at actually the alerts that exist, there's a winter weather advisory here in uh, southern and central Georgia. Several winter weather advisories up in the northeast as well. Winter storm warnings, but even blizzard warnings up here in the plains. Look at this blowing snow again you guys have had winds in the 70s all up in this area 60s and 70s in South Dakota one of my friends was telling me they've got wind you know it's just hours of wind in the 60s and 70s that's just terrifying up there I would imagine red flag warnings uh, in the central plains down into Texas with even some freeze warnings down here cold weather advisories blizzard warnings for potential uh, you know just blowing snow and potential for another inch or two winter storm warnings or uh, watches up here again for, for next couple of days regarding the pattern coming up look at this this is the jet stream all the way out at 294 hours from the European ensembles we've got a pretty good configuration here kind of a ridge going up in the west trough in the east delivering cold air this jet is poking in it's uh, sending energy into the kind of the northern portion of the country and look what happens as we get on out toward the end you sort of get this reflection of a south a southern a subtropical branch of the jet kind of coming in bringing energy across the south and then delivering energy across the north this pattern is loaded with potential when you start to see energy coming in to the western United States with a bunch of cold air in place you've got the uh, ingredients for fireworks and fireworks we're seeing on some of the models. Here's actually the cold, uh, kind of a look at the cold from the European ensembles. Let's scroll this up so you can see it. As we head in through the weekend, there's the cold blast number one. Cold blast number two comes in early next week. These purples are just very, very, very cold temperatures. We're talking about the single digit highs. Uh, you know, teens, minus teens for lows, get a little bit of a break in the south as we head toward January 24th, 25th before the next surge of cold air comes in. And probably this is a mile up off the ground at the surface. We're looking at colder than this kind of leaking in underneath that. There comes another surge. And this pattern here, my friends, when we get out toward the 29th or the end of January, a big blocking signature up here over the um, Greenland, northern Canada area pushing the storm track south, plenty of cold air, high pressure kind of building in here, still got that ridge on the west coast, high and dry out west remains the theme, and that continues to persist, maybe warms up slightly as we head into the 1st of February there. This is what the pattern looks like. Let's go back to the our other display here. This is a trend of the pattern at January the 28th, the four-run trend. Look at this, big blocking signature showing up. You couldn't hardly ask for a better pattern, maybe a little bit of a better sub tropical branch of the jet stream but this trough out here along the west coast just off the west coast is going to send energy into the into the states and uh, kind of got a reflection of almost a 50 50 low setting up off of the uh, northeast coast that sort of helps to bring in high pressure build confluence bring cold air into the east and you get any energy working across and this is what you end up seeing there's there there's the um there is the uh sort of the actual uh pattern as we evolution as we go on out from the European ensembles and you can see that blocking signature just persists toward the end of January and here's what happens look at this this is the GFS from today and uh, earlier today and you get a, a big winter storm coming across and developing into that cold air Ohio Valley up to the northeast and mid-Atlantic getting clobbered pop, probably into the upper southeast too as the model would underestimate the amount of cold air big time high pressure working in and then another system for the southeast and parts of the mid-Atlantic even getting some snow up into the Ohio Valley again. It turns up the coast, blast the northeast with a blizzard. Last night, look at this, the run at last run of the GFS. Look at this, 980 millibar low off the coast of Cape Lookout. Blizzard conditions for much of North Carolina, parts of Virginia. That is 
the zero Z run, but this is what we're seeing show up in the means as we had a lot of models are showing this. This is the AI GFS. It has the same storm around the 24th and 25th for the Ohio Valley. And then it comes in with another big storm in the Southeast. There it is, look at that. A lot of model support starting to build for the 24th and 25th and then again at the end of January for a storm signal there. So we're seeing the models really start to pick that up. GFS got snow all the way into Arkansas, Missouri, up into the Ohio Valley. Unfortunately, it blanks central Pennsylvania again, but uh, not all the models are doing that. So take heart, plenty of snow. Look at this, two feet of snow along the I-95 cities. Uh, just incredible AI, uh, European AI showing a similar thing. In terms of the footprint, here is the AI Ensembles. Again, very similar with its footprint here. So we're starting to narrow in on this zone where snowfall looks more and more likely and even a big winter storm or two as we head in toward the end of the month. There's the GFS Ensembles as well. Some of this is from the earlier snowstorm that we're talking about, but uh, same sort of footprint here. We are looking at interesting times ahead as we head on in toward the end of the month. And let me go back so I can show you that again. There is the, uh, this is the GFS itself. There is the uh, AI ensembles and the uh, European AI on, so let's go back. That's the European AI. That's the European, I'm sorry, I'm bouncing all over the place. There's the uh, European AI and the GFS ensembles. Now you can see the whole thing. And here finally is the temperature profile of the next couple of days. Look at that. Uh, cold weather as we uh, go through the afternoon today, not even getting out uh, of the single digits in some areas up here in the plains and uh, Midwest. Very cold tonight, below zero. Wind chills are going to be in the minus 20s in some of these areas. Cold temperatures all the way down into South Texas tomorrow. Highs are going to be very cold again across the north, chilly in the south with potential snow falling in some areas. Looks like the tundra up here with minus teens across the north, 20s making it all the way down into south or central Florida. Watch out for falling iguanas down there. Again, bitterly cold wind chills. And then as we head on into Monday, not a lot of relief up here. It's going to be very, very cold across the north and low temperatures again. Extremely cold, making it all the way into the south. Here is the 8 to 14 day temperature outlook from the CPC. There it is. Very cold in the east, very warm in the southwest. Matching that up with an... Um, higher chances of above normal precipitation in the east and even in the Pacific Northwest. You guys are finally going to start to see as that Aleutian low sets up off the coast, bringing in some rain and some snow to you all up here in the Northwest, going to be dry in the south. And look at this. This is the risk assessment. You see this? This is the 24th through the 30th. Ha, slight risk now by the CPC of heavy snow from the Midwest to the Ohio Valley, Mid-South, and parts of the Northeast as well. And as we get to the end of January, I think these odds are going to go up and up and up. And that is the show for today, my friends. I'll be back tomorrow with another video. I'll continue to tweet at Real Cold Rain on X. So follow me there, and I'll make sure that as things change with this upcoming snowstorm potential, uh, I will let you know the latest happenings with that. In the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you for joining me, and thank you again for all the support. Take care, and God bless.